This is a high temperature flexible material, which doesn't really exist yet. It is flame resistant, toxicity resistant. It is very high impact. Just for the gigs, we made the Frisbee because you could throw yeah. it anytime you want, hit anything and it's still gonna survive. Dude. All right, guys, we're here at AMUG 2023 at the Ascentium booth. Now, Ascentium in their DNA is a materials company. That's how they really started. And it wasn't until people started asking, they started building machines. We've got the roof here today to explain and show off some of these incredible examples. Thanks so much for taking us through this. Thanks, Rob. Uh, you've been around for a while. We talk a lot about yep. materials. Let's just start with this. What are, what's going on here? This is a PCTG, Ascentium's bread and butter, mm -hmm. the material we introduced to the additive market. One of the most easiest material to print with. What we really did is showed our support material capability to do the Z stacking. If you print one of this on our high speed machine, it's about two hours each. Then you have to come back and get at it. But if you do the Z stacking like, like this. Take it off the plate, plate scrape it off, takes time. You gotta yes. cool down, warm up. But if you just stack them. Stack them, just yeah. press the button once. Come next day, you have 15 of them. You're good to go. And this is water soluble, This right? is water soluble, so you take it. Dunk it in your... Dunk it in water, out come multiple parts. Exactly. So this part here is your HDN CF25, right? Correct. What's this for? So this one is particularly made for a vacuum forming of earbuds. So all the earbuds when you buy, they come in a tiny, you know, white yeah. sheet. This is the case that this hangs is the on case. the shelf. Exactly. Yeah. You need a high temperature material, so it has high stiffness. HDNCF is perfect for it. It can withstand temperatures up to 200 degrees centigrade. It's one of the stiffest material out there right. because it has 25% carbon fiber, highest in the market. They call it black aluminum for a reason, right? It can replace aluminum in a lot of different applications. That phrase is a little bit interesting because it's not <laughs> in every way like aluminum, but it right. shares some properties. So cool tagline. This, yes. These are more molds. Tell me more about this. This kind of vacuum forming is cool. But when you do compression oh molding and stuff like this, oh my god! So you want a soft oh, that's handle. Awesome. The challenge with this kind of material is you want a very easy release. Right. So you want a chemically resistant material. Right. That's where polypropylene comes into picture. It is a highly chemically resistant material. Doesn't stick to anything. That means your molds are going to come off very easy. So here we've got some Z, GNZ, uh, polypropylene Z probably, or a few, a few other yeah, Zs. Right. And it's electrostatic discharge safe. So what are we seeing here? And why is it important that we use a special material for this type of process? So when we talk about ESD safe, two things you need is protection against uh, electrostatically discharged stuff. Right. But also primary usage for these materials is coverings and electronics manufacturing. While you want to save them, you don't want any dust in your electronics then it could be short-circuited and your whole phone is blast. Okay. In our case, we use our multi-layer technology and coat our filament with carbon nanotubes, which never come loose. We have a really good example of this yes. here to show carbon nanotubes coming off materials. So uh, what do we have here? So we printed some pencils just for gigs yeah. of our uh, Z line of filament, uh -huh. but also a competitor material. Both are nylon base. Okay. I'll start with, you know, HTN, Essentium, nylon. Uh, which is a Z material, doesn't write. It does, nothing falls off. Let's tear the paper with it and there's no black spot. No residue. No, nothing coming No out residue. There. Try the same thing with a competitor nylon. I'm just gonna put light pressure. You can see it's a crayon. Yeah. That's why we did pencils. Yeah. And if you go hard at it, it's literally dust. That's where our ESD materials find a lot of space in all electronics manufacturing wow. facilities. And then uh, what do we got here? It is another material, another application for a, a drone body. Um, oh yeah. That is being used by our HTNCF 25 again. Very high stiffness, but also good impact resistance and good dimensional stability. Now we're gonna move into a little more of the high temps and the crazy stuff that we're known for here at Vision Miner. But this, once again, if you've been a follower and subscriber for a while, you've seen this before. Still one of the biggest, most impressive peak parts I've ever seen. This is difficult. How did you guys manage to achieve something like this? This is a culmination of our good filament our machine and our amazing process engineers. Process control process, and process. having people to figure it out. Figure it out. People yeah. is the key because peak is the hardest material to print with. However, if you have the right filament and the right process settings and the right guys doing it, 
you can print big parts like this. Look how heavy is this? This is like more than a kilo. Yeah. We have no warping on it. You can see yeah. it doesn't move. And there is no warping. You guys use an infrared heating system, the 280i. Right, right. right. That so you're keeps, heating the part. We are heating the part, yeah. not the whole thing. That makes, is, makes the high retention of the heat inside the part. Right. Keeps it in a heat window that we need it. Epic peak parts, really cool. And now over here, we've got some PEC as well, right? right. Polyether ketone ketone. Exactly. Why would you use PEC instead of peak in, in sort of what areas? So with the peak being in the industry, people know where to use it and very demanding applications. Well, PEC is a cousin of peak. Right. That is a lot more printable. If you don't have a particular regulation built in and you still want to have that high demand of high temperature, high strength and high impact you need, and also high chemical resistance. Both will work, but some industries have regulations that you can only use peak. But if you don't have that, I would any day suggest- Any day. Because it's very, very easier to print. Way you easier. don't need you know, the top process engineers out there. Right. This one can be done with you know, a lot more easily. Very cool. And then we got some really interesting examples yes. here. I see the, uh, yeah. you got the gyroid info going on there. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's a gyroid info and uh, it lends itself very well to our customer. So they wanted a crude oil filter. Oh. And it needed oh. to be in line. So they needed a high chemical resistant material. The current supplier they have does filter only in certain grades, but if they want a medium grade in between grade, they can't do it. Now with the power of 3D printing, Ugh. they can. It's simple. It's not. Even, this wasn't yeah. designed in CAD. No, it is not even designed in it's CAD. A, it's a cylinder. It's simple cylinder, and we just said, hey, use this gyroid pattern with uh, you know this much infill space. Boom. Dude, that is so smart. Yeah. All right. So over here we've got CFPPS, right? Correct. Polyphenylene sulfide. Correct. Oh. Now, now you have become a chemistry major. I, yeah, dude. Yeah. I could with all the stuff we go. do. It's nuts. So we've got two parts here. One straight off the printer. Yes. And one a little bit lower pitch. That one's been annealed. So after printing, what exactly happened there? Off the printer, you don't get fully crystalline material. So you can still use it, but sometimes you need that extra strength, extra chemical resistance. So you go anneal it, and now it's fully crystalline. This is the highest crystalline material we have on the table here. Wow. And when you have such a highly crystalline material, it is going to sound like that because it gets very stiff. The modulus yeah. is very high. Now let's talk about these red ones real quick. We've yeah. got some yeah. interesting things. Uh -huh. The red is a very specific anti-static, you said, right? Correct. As Correct. opposed to ESD. Correct. ESD materials or ESD safe materials, but they need an active grounding because they need to transfer charges. Right. In a situation where you don't have an active grounding, traveling in a desert, you're flying somewhere, you still need ESD protection on your electronics. That's where you need an anti-start, which means these materials have inbuilt charge dissipation, which don't need active grounding, and they will still protect your electronics. What kind of uh, chemical or, or so, substance is in there? Yeah, these that? are called IDPs, inherently dissipative polymers. Hmm. So what they do, soak up moisture and water is electrically conductive. Interesting. Yeah. You know, it's funny, uh, some of you at home might have a coffee grinder, right? And you know how it gets super staticky all the time and everything? I was online reading and apparently you can just spritz a little bit of water on the coffee grounds, put it through the grinder and there's no static. So water is anti-static and that Correct. makes perfect sense. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't need any grounding because it's inherently... Yeah. Dissipative. Next, we're going on to the Duratem. This is a high temperature flexible material, which doesn't really exist yet. There's nothing else like it. And we've been testing it in house at Vision Miner for the last, what, two years ago? You sent us yeah. to school. And it, it took a while. Like, Let's figure it out. And then uh, they finally nailed it. So, this material we have specifically designed to withstand temperatures up to 150 degrees centigrade. Super tough. It's got a little Super. bit of give. It's still pretty rigid. It's not it's, like yeah. rubber, rubber, rubber. It's not complete rubber. It is a short D hardness. It is high impact. It is super hard to make a material that is flexible, but also has a heat deflection above 150. There's, those two don't align. That's 150 Celsius. Celsius. Or do we say Celsius or centigrade? Both. Yeah, this day, <laughs> day and age. Awesome. You know, it's incredible to see all this stuff that you guys are doing because you're really yeah. focused on production. You're really focused yes. on how is manufacturing using all this technology. Exactly. As opposed to just how do I make something cool or an end use part or a trinket or whatever. It's like, no, how do we integrate this into industrial manufacturing and make it work and scale for businesses on, uh, you know, small or large. A lot more videos coming, guys. Be sure to check it out. Narup, thank you so much. Rob, thank you so much for your time. And, Absolutely. Uh, Vision Miner 
folks. Thank you for your support. If you guys want to learn more, go to visionminer.com slash Ascentium, and we've got a whole bunch of info for you. Or give us a call, shoot us an email. We love hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. I'll see you on the next one.